Okay, so over the course of my time on YouTube, I've been frequently asked what my favorite documentary is, and if I'd ever cover it on the What The Fuck series. I'm not against the idea, it's just that the analysis format of the What The Fuck series doesn't flow well with the literal format of documentaries. But I would still like to cover these films in some way. Recently, a YouTuber I watched called Mr. Gigi was asking his audience for disturbing docs, and I threw my hat in the ring. A lot of people recommended docs on serial killers, which, don't get me wrong, is disturbing, but I just wanted to provide something a little more unique. So here are some disturbing documentaries that I think you should check out. First up, we have Night and Fog by Elaine René. This is considered to be one of the first Holocaust documentaries being released just 10 years after the end of World War II. This is not a conventional documentary that presents you with a list of facts. Instead, it uses this tragic event to explore the brutality of humanity, hoping to create a warning for the future. Naturally, this is filled with graphic imagery used to create a brutally honest picture of life in the camps. Contemporary shots of the camps are haunted by images of the past. Eerily, footage is presented to us with skillful and detailed cinematography. Subjects are filmed with no emotion behind the camera, and that's when you realize this is taken from Nazi archives. It's a thought that lingers in your head. What was this footage going to be used for? It's but one of the many questions this film makes you think about. Narration is provided by Michel Bouquet, with a script written by Jean Cairol, a Holocaust survivor himself. This may be the shortest one on the list, but I'd say it may also be the hardest to sit through. I think it's a very important film, and I encourage anyone who can see it to give it a watch. Il y avait un bloc chirurgical. Pour un peu, on se serait cru devant une vraie clinique. Docteur SS. Infirmière inquiétante. Il y a un décor, mais derrière. Des opérations inutiles, des amputations, des mutilations expérimentales. Les capots, comme les chirurgiens SS, peuvent se faire la main. Les grandes usines chimiques envoient au camp des échantillons de leurs produits toxiques. Ou bien ils achètent un lot de déportés pour leurs essais. De ces cobayes, quelques-uns survivront. Castrés. Next up, we have Titty Cut Follies. This is the directorial debut of prolific documentarian Frederick Wiseman. It documents the mental and physical abuse patients endured at the Bridgewater State Hospital for the Criminally Insane. It offers an unflinching look into the daily lives of inmates and the conditions they lived in, where offered no narration with scenes playing out on their own and speaking for themselves. This is about as objective as you can get with documentary filmmaking. This can be considered as kind of an art film, meaning the presentation is just as strange as the topic it's covering. Nevertheless, this is an important piece of filmmaking that I think you should check out. Are you involved in any sports here? There are no sports here. All I've got is a baseball uh, and, a, and, a, and a glove, and that's it. There was nothing else. Uh, back at the other place, I, I have all the facilities to improve myself. I have the gym, I have the uh, school, I have uh, all kinds of uh, uh, anything I want. Are you in group therapy here? Uh, no, there, there was no group. Obviously, I do not need a group therapy. I need peace and quiet. See me? This place is disturbing me. It's, it's harming me. I'm losing weight. Every, uh, everything that's uh, happening to me is bad. And all I get, all I get is, uh, well, why don't you wait? Why don't you take medication? Medication is disagreeable to me. There are people who, uh, to whom you may not give medication, well, obviously. And, and medication I got is hurting me. It's harming me. Well, well, See? It, it, in fact, uh, to be specific, it harmed my thorax. I do know that much what it's harming. Well, and if it's harming, yeah, right here. Yes, and it has harmed me and has harmed me in every way possible. My, uh, my, uh, obviously. If you leave me here, that means that you want me to get, uh, get harmed. Next up, we have The Corporation. This film documents the history and growth of corporations and the immense impact they have on society. As you may have guessed, some of it is downright disturbing. 
Something you may not know is that corporations are actually recognized as legal people. Because of this, the film analyzes corporations for signs of psychopathic behavior. And the evidence they provide is truly eye-opening. Now this information may have been pretty fresh for 2003, but it's been nearly two decades so a lot of this may not be as revelatory for you now. However, I think the individual stories they cover are still fascinating, and the arguments they bring up are still relevant today. Especially the part about living organisms being patentable. Yeah, you're gonna want to look into that one. There's also a sequel film released last year that covers contemporary issues. I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard good things about it. This may not be fresh news, but it doesn't hurt to take a glimpse into the past and consider where we are now. The film was also released for free on YouTube, making this the most easily accessible one on this list. Next up, we have The Bridge, directed by Eric Steele. This is a 2006 documentary about San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge, which unfortunately is the world's most popular suicide destination. This film explores the lives of people who jumped, interviewing loved ones and the people who witnessed them. The subject matter alone isn't the reason why it's on this list. The film actually shows footage of these people in their final moments. In fact, cameras were set up around the bridge for the sole purpose of capturing these moments. And it's from this where questions about ethics arise. Could this be considered exploitation? At what point does a documentary cross a line into exploitation of its subject? Should there even be ethical obligations for a film that tries to pursue the truth, no matter how harsh it may be? Undoubtedly, some of you are here because you like watching disturbing stuff. But unlike fictional stories, these films deal with real events and real people. And so I pass the same questions on to you. Even if you conclude it's exploitation, I've found comments from people saying this film saved their lives. Which puts a whole new perspective on these questions. This may be my least favorite on this list, mainly due to some amateur structure issues, but the questions this film brings up, both surrounding the topic it covers, and the medium of film itself, are fascinating and definitely worth a watch. And at first glance I thought, wow, this guy looks like he's gonna bungee jump because of the way that he um, was standing on the railing and then common sense kicked in and said, you can't, my thoughts were, you couldn't jump off the bridge bungee jump off the bridge. And then he just kind of held his arms out and disappeared. And I wasn't sure if I was imagining this. And so I drove for a few seconds and looked in my rearview mirror and my heart rate went up and I almost felt like I wanted to start crying because I thought to myself, wow, I might be one of the last people that have ever seen this person alive. When I went into the, high, the tower and I talked to the highway patrolman, you know, I asked him blatantly, I said, is this a rare occurrence or does this happen often? And he looked at me and, and kind of smiled and just said, it happens all the time. Next up, we have Dear Zachary. I'm kind of breaking my rule where I avoid true crime, but no disturbing docs list is complete without this film. What separates this film from other true crime documentaries is that it's told from the perspective of the victim's best friend. And when you read the full title, A Letter to a Son About His Father, you start to realize what the goal of this film may be. I won't give you more info than that, since it's best to experience the whole story blind. But fair warning, you might cry. A summary of the evidence against Shirley Turner. He was found on the morning of Tuesday, November 6th, laying behind his car in a parking lot at Keystone State Park in Derry Township, Pennsylvania. A man walking through Keystone Park at 6.10 p.m. the previous evening, November 5th, had seen his black Toyota Corolla parked next to an SUV. This was 10 minutes after he told Clark he was going to meet Shirley. Meeting her at six. Shirley drove a Toyota RAV4 SUV. He was shot five times, in the face, the chest, twice in the buttocks, and in the back of the head. He also received a blunt trauma to the back of the head. That didn't sound random. That sounded like rage and vengeance. The ammunition used was CCI 22 caliber bullets. There were six spent casings and one live round on the ground beside him. Shirley owned a Phoenix Arms 22 caliber handgun. I'm not going to kid you, doctor. Uh, I know. I'm interested, I'm interested in the gun. And you just bought the gun, right? Not too long ago? Yeah. Well, I, I, I have that. it for protection. Yeah, I can understand you know, that. I'm just and curious. I wanted to know for safety. 
Next up, we have The Act of Killing by Joshua Oppenheimer. This documentary is about members of the Indonesian death squads who participated in mass killings for their government in the 1960s. This genocide led to the deaths of almost a million people, all for opposing the military dictatorship. This is essentially a character study of some of the most evil men now in their old age. It's disturbing hearing them recount their senseless killings, all with such pride and arrogance. Although as the film progresses, the reality of their crimes starts to kick in. Like other films in this video, this story is not told in a conventional documentary style way. In fact, director Joshua Oppenheimer is a fan of Night and Fog, and the artistic inspiration is definitely noticeable. Not only is this disturbing, but it's also pretty long. Prepare yourself before tackling this one. Finally, we have Black Fish. This documentary is about the killer whales living at SeaWorld and the unethical business practices the company participates in. They straight up abuse these animals and cover it up in deceptive ways. The film provides plenty of footage that is both eye-opening and hard to watch. Upon release, this film hurt SeaWorld stock immensely, a great example of how film and documentaries can have an impact on society. This is the most conventionally structured documentary on the list, so if you want to start somewhere, give this one a watch. Before we finish here, I want to give an honorable mention to films that I don't think are too disturbing, but I do want to shout out real quick. First we have Jesus Camp. This documentary is about crazy evangelical Christians essentially brainwashing kids into believing their distorted perception of God and religion. And I really emphasize distorted. Everything is a sin to these people. Watch this one if you want to be angry, but also find solace in that this film led to the camp being closed. Next we have Going Clear, Scientology and the Prison of Belief by Alex Gibney. This film documents the history of Scientology, deconstructs their bizarre belief system, and highlights stories of former members and the abuse they endured. It's genuinely surprising this place is still in business. If you want more reason to hate this organization, then give this a watch. Finally, we have Tickled by David Ferrier, which is one of my favorite documentaries of all time. It begins with Ferrier wanting to do a story on competitive tickling videos he found. From there, he enters a rabbit hole where he discovers some legal and ethical issues concerning the people who produce these videos. It gets kinda insane. You can't guess where this goes. Again, one of my favorite documentaries. I encourage everyone to go see it. So there you have it. 10 documentaries you should check out. Let me know which one intrigued you the most, and if you end up watching it, tell me what you think. Also recommend me some stuff too. A lot of these films were made in the 2000s, so if you got some older stuff, I'm definitely interested. So, hope you enjoyed that video. Been kind of experimenting with new formats to try and cover more films that might not work for my longer videos. Doesn't mean I'll never cover them in a long video. I've thought about covering Night and Fog at some point, but for now, this is simpler. Anyways, thank you to all my patrons for supporting me. As always, Little Shy Fry is a real one. And yeah, hope to see you guys in the next one.